welcome to In The Pod. My name's Dave Jones and you have just found the podcast for technology vendors looking to get more from marketing and marketeers looking to offer more to technology vendors. Now, as you know already, each episode of In The Pod focuses in on the various disciplines within marketing. And this time we're talking about the massively important area of search engine optimization or SEO for short. And to guide us through the, the landscape, guide us through the minefield of SEO, I'm delighted to have with me Mary Smucker Priest, who is the founder and CEO at Simple Search Marketing. Mary, welcome to the pod. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you here. And let, let's get things kicked off. Mary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you work for and who you work with, if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay, so I started my company, Simple Search Marketing, about five years ago, um, coming off of being the head of global SEO and paid search strategy for a company called EMC. Um, they were acquired by Dell in the biggest tech merger ever. Uh, long story short, a lot of the marketing department got cut and I struck out on my own. Um, having kind of grown up in the Boston search marketing agency world, I had a lot of um, experience with healthcare B2B, high tech, all of the wonderful kind of uh, next gen software organizations coming out of Boston. Um, and so I had several contacts. And so I reached out and said, hey, I'm starting my own thing. Um, and the rest is kind of history. And it's grown organically over the past five years. Um, now my team is about 10 people. And we work with a variety of clients across disciplines, across B2C and B2B. Um, and I think the really kind of interesting thing about Simple Search is that we are not just concerned with driving traffic to your website. We always try to figure out what the end goal is. And we try to dig into what leads are, um, which leads are most important. And um, we also have a you know, expertise in analytics, because as you know, you need to measure your search results or you don't really know where you're going. But everything we do is um, based on KPIs desired by our clients. All right, fantastic. And you've touched on on elements of this already, but I want to try and, and narrow it down or, or spread it out, which, whichever way you want to go. What is SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. So we, <clears throat> excuse me, we get into um, the mindset of a searcher. You go to Google, Bing, et cetera, you plug in what you're looking for and Google returns thousands of results. Um, and then we try to reverse engineer how various websites get into those search results and then develop a strategy to make our clients' websites appear high in the organic search results. Um, it's a combination of keyword strategy, content development, and technical backend SEO, alongside, of course, of the, um, the website's reputation or backlink profile. So I think those are the re really main ingredients that go into every SEO strategy, is kind of reverse engineering and looking at those elements. All right. Um, and lots of different people within marketing teams nowadays uh, who actually owns seo within a marketing team typically it's so interesting because every client is different um the smaller the shop sometimes we work with the sole marketing um head um in a large kind of enterprise organization sometimes we plug in with the content team sometimes we plug in with the tech team um and ideally we want to plug in with both of those teams because you really have to get there to move the needle uh, it's actually, sometimes it's a little bit easier working with folks who have a smaller marketing team because they all talk to each other. Um, but, you know, we can help people move the needle and make a case to pull in different assets from the organization to make our SEO dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> Making those SEO dreams come true. That's an interesting point because the next thing I want to talk about is how do organizations measure SEO, but equally, um, what does success look like in an SEO project? So I am a bit of a word nerd and in a perfect world, and I think that what really is kind of a rally cry for folks to get everybody on board with SEO is keyword rankings. So it sounds kind of old school, 
Um, a lot of folks don't really go all out and develop a kind of keyword universe, a keyword strategy, but that's where I always start. Um, because when you can actually show, hey, you know, this keyword actually gets 500,000 searches per month. If we get you in the top spot, which will require work on both of our ends, you're going to reap the benefits. Um, and the kind of holy trinity that I like to talk about is improved keyword rankings, showing the increase in traffic to related pages, and then of course conversions rolling off of that. All right, you mentioned one phrase in there that I've not heard before, a keyword universe. What on earth is one of those? <laughs> um, so it's looking across a website, figuring out what the kind of content buckets are, aligning your keyword targets back to those buckets, and then also thinking about where a searcher is in the search journey. Are they just looking for what is content management? Um, are they looking for a content management solution, a content management vendor? Are they actually looking for your brand? Because um, they're, you know, branded search is a huge deal. And sometimes if your name is similar to another company's name, you might not even have the top spot for your brand. So we see that more than you can imagine. Um, but it's kind of making sure that you've got those three buckets. Yep. So keywords aligned to each bucket, keywords aligned to each kind of solution or goal, and then figuring out kind of where to start, what the low hanging fruit is. And then a lot of times, if you're trying to get more visibility on a very competitive keyword, those are kind of our aspirational keywords. Um, All right, makes sense. And I guess it, it sort of drives me back to almost the, the why question here, right? So feels sort of obvious, but I wanna make sure that, that it is. Is SEO just about getting ranked higher up in Google and Bing searches, or are there other benefits that businesses get from doing good SEO? Well, um, one thing, so I've been working with analytics tools, Google Analytics, Adobe for 17 plus years. And um, it's not just the keyword rankings, it's the traffic. Another thing that I love about SEO and why that's kind of my chosen discipline is that SEO is generally the top performing channel bringing traffic to a website, which is interesting because um, it's not usually a huge budget line item compared to paid search or compared to digital media, but it literally drives the best on-site engagement. It's interesting. Um, I'm from the content marketing field and I've been fighting with SEO marketers <laughs> for years over uh, strategies and who has the final say on on verbiage within within a document, within a blog, within a, a, a web page, for example. But uh, interesting to hear that you you see SEO as the, the top performing piece of that puzzle. But another piece of that puzzle that you mentioned was paid search. And those two terms get thrown around a lot together, SEO and PPC. What is PPC uh, and what's the difference between SEO and PPC? Yes. So paid search are the ads that appear um, right under your search results. Generally, they are labeled ad pretty clearly. Um, Google experiments actually with putting the word ad next to them, what color that should be to at least differentiate between paid and organic results. And the um, Google's kind of line is that buying keywords in paid search will not influence your organic rankings. There is debate across the search community about whether or not that's true. Um, sometimes it can kind of provide a boost and that might just be because the user is seeing both a paid search ad and an organic search ad. Paid search does have the advantage of showing above the fold. Uh, Google started showing four ads above the fold about a year or two ago which really pushes organic search results down. I can't remember the stat, but um, an overwhelming majority of people still trust organic search more than paid search because it's not an ad. And the way paid search works is that, again, you determine a list of target keywords, you align them to goals that you want people to perform on your website, um, determine a budget. Sometime, I mean, Budgets can range all the way from $500 a month for a small local business to millions of dollars a month for an enterprise B2B or B2C company. I actually, I often recommend that people pursue both channels just to figure out what's out there and see if you can actually drive conversions via paid search. And in many cases you can. Well, that was gonna be one of my questions, right? So you've got SEO, which is driving organic traffic. You've got 
PPC, which is which is paying for traffic. Do you have a feel for which one of those is best? Is one suited to specific purposes or specific campaigns, for example? That's a great question. My bent is toward SEO because it's um, iterative. You can't really turn it off unless your website completely changes and you mess up 301 redirects, um, unless Google can't crawl your site. It's kind of, it's a much more evergreen kind of con um, traffic source. Paid search, of course, you turn off your budget, it goes away. Um, there's a fair amount of machine learning that happens with paid search and obviously organic search, but there are implications for if you're running paid search and your tracking goes down or your website goes down, Google has to do a manual reset. So there are all these different kinds of things that can impact uh, your paid and organic traffic. It always felt to me a little bit like paid uh paid search was the sugar rush versus uh, SEO was the sort of the, the pasta and the nutrients that you get on it in a long, exactly. long term meal. Um, all right, let's sort of take a wider look for a second. So you mentioned budgets, you mentioned content earlier, and how does SEO, how does PPC fit into that overall marketing mix? So think content, think digital think events what where does it fit how does it interact and what does it look like from a budget perspective sure so in my opinion um search is the most kind of impactful channel driving traffic to a website people are intentionally looking for you or someone like you so um like I said before, with organic search followed closely by paid search, you often see the best on-site engagement. Uh, people looking at multiple pages, spending a fair amount of time on the website. And that's because they're looking, <laughs> they're searching for you. So it's not kind of one of these more passive things like a display ad or um, content syndication, things like that. They all have their place. Um, but in my opinion, and one of the reasons I chose search is that it's so easy to demonstrate cause and effect. So you do this, this happens or not, and then you figure out why it didn't happen and then go back to the drawing table. Talk to me about the yin and yang, though. So if you drive traffic to a website and there's no content there, um, th isn't that a little bit of a, a sort of a, a pointless exercise? Yes, exactly. exactly. And a lot of times uh, when people are selecting keywords, whether from an organic or a paid search standpoint, a, if you don't have the content on your website related to that keyword, you will never rank for it. You just won't. Um, and then on the flip side with paid search, if you don't have content related to the keywords you're buying, and if that content's not good content, A, Google's not going to find you relevant for that search and your ad will probably not even show. And then B, if you get lucky enough and there's no competition, if people don't see the word or the topic on the page, a compelling page that they're driven to, they're going to leave immediately. It's, I see it time and time again. So it feels a little bit like a chicken and an egg situation, right? So, so which one of those has to come first or, or do they both sort of have to come at the same time as, as part of a coherent strategy? Sure. So in my, and this is going back a long way. So back in the day when people, when companies didn't have websites, it was amazing to get in there and say, okay, these are the topics that people are searching for. Let's develop the navigation, the whole website structure and the content around these topics. Now that, you know, everybody has a website, they have different iterations of websites. We often come to the game where there's already content on a website. Um, we, from an SEO standpoint, optimize existing content, but inevitably nobody has all of the content they need in order to rank for the keywords that they want to. So it's, it's always this, Content gap analysis is a big part of the SEO engagements that we have, and that's ongoing because search patterns change. Um, again, I can't, I don't have the stat at hand, but there are something like a million new search queries every day. Wow. So people's interests, people's search habits change. It's so dynamic. Well, to that point and, and sort of driving this from the theoretical to the, to the practical for a second, if people are looking to get started with SEO, 
what are some tips that you could give them just just to get things moving? Sure. Um, think about what you would want your website to show up for. Um, what solutions do you offer? What products do you offer? Go to Google, plug in those keywords that you might associate with yourself and see if you are showing up in the proper kind of neighborhood of search results. You know, sometimes you might think, oh, I should rank for artificial intelligence. You go there, you plug in artificial intelligence and it's all um, informational results. Um, impossible to get there unless you're a Wikipedia or a huge publisher. And I shouldn't say huge publisher, but somebody who is very, you know, relevant to artificial intelligence. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> that, that's good. It, it, do you know what? It sounds like um, if you've got a relatively large website, that's going to take an awful long time. And, and I'm sort of preempting this because we're marketeers. We love tools to do everything. That There's yes. got to be SEO tools out yes. there to help you along with this, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So after kind of noodling and developing the list of keywords you'd like to appear for, um, there are various tools where you can estimate the amount of traffic that um, you might get from ranking for one of those keywords. So you develop a list of keywords, you determine whether or not you have content on the website that will get you to rank for those keywords. Um, there's a fair amount of kind of backend technical work that uh, goes into SEO too that we don't really need to touch on, but then um, Obviously, you need to kind of do a keyword map and align existing and yet to come content back to what you want to rank for. All right, good stuff. Um, slightly provocative question. Is SEO only for big companies? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to give me more than that. Oh, no, okay. Why not? Yes, okay. So actually, the smaller mom and pop companies or just smaller companies in general, um, get a significant amount of interest, foot traffic even, from organic search. Everybody goes to Google or to Bing if it's your default to look for um, things to do near them, um, products to buy. I think even when there's in-store shopping happening, people are doing comparison searches on their phone. So it's critical to be appearing in those search results, again, at every part of the funnel. So when people are information seeking, when they're comparison shopping, when they're looking up your brand and reviews like that, you want to make sure that your best kind of SEO foot is put forward. Um, and another kind of interesting thing about SEO is that the search engine results pages are always changing. I think it started with images back in the day, in addition to just the blue link search results. Now we see videos, we see reviews, we see frequently asked questions. Um, Google pulls from something called the knowledge graph to deliver these rich results, uh, structured data. So it's just, it's interesting to see how much it has changed and then how often it changes because the algorithm changes daily. Not in a huge way, but um, you know, things fluctuate. And there are several kind of core updates that are released every year that are generally to reward websites that are uh, easy to navigate, that have great content, and then also to not reward and to make sure that Google's not delivering kind of spammy, low quality results. All right, that's a beautiful segue to talk about the future of SEO. But before we get there, one uh, acronym that I've seen popping up all over um, blogs and, and actually in some of the SEO tools that we use is AMP in yes. relation to SEO. What does AMP stand for? And again, what on earth does it mean? Sure. So AMP equals accelerated mobile pages. And these are a kind of, um, it's a web development framework where you can put up a page that is very, very fast on mobile. So it has limited kind of dynamic elements. Um, it's very straightforward and easy to crawl. A lot of websites were encouraged to do this over the past, I'm losing track of time, five, 10 years. Um, one of the challenges with AMP or AMP is that the content does not live on your domain. So you can't measure visits to that content. 
with Google Analytics. You can see if somebody clicks into a link through that AMP page and lands on your website, but you can't see people landing on that page itself. And in fact, um, the chatter is that Google will be retiring AMP. Ah, so I'm always uh, with my finger on the pulse. I'm asking what it is, just as Google are about to retire it. But uh, never yeah. mind. Well, let's let's get that finger back on the pulse. Then you talked about some of the changes that have happened over the past five to ten years. You know, images popping up, reviews popping up, um, videos popping up. What do you see happening in the coming years, either in SEO and or PPC? What what are some of the things that are we're going to start seeing. Sure. Um, so it's all about kind of Google has been pushing toward this idea of the semantic web. So instead of pulling information directly from a website, Google's going to deliver search results from various websites, various entities on the internet. Um, it it's interesting if you. Uh, it, it's still possible to rank well if you're just paying attention to the kind of three things that have always mattered, which is content, crawlability, and reputation. But then there are these other um, kind of parts of the web that you can influence that can be pulled into Google search results. And so that's going to just be really interesting to see how that changes. Uh, one thing that Google actually did that was pretty, I guess, I don't know if unusual is the right word, but I don't like it is, um, you know, generally every page has a browser title or a meta title. Uh, a month or so back, Google started not displaying those as the blue link in search results, but instead pulling from the content itself or pulling from an H1. And I've read that this happened. This, this is happening 50% ish of the time. Um, so that's a recent thing. And and when you start talking about these trends, what's funny is that oftentimes Google will completely do away with them with no um, heads up. So for example, if you recall a while ago, there were there was authorship, which was a huge deal. So you could get your little profile pictures showing in Google search results. Well, everybody learned how to do that and then Google stopped showing them. Um. <laughs> so are we all beholden to Google from an SEO perspective? And, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I think it's what's going to pay the bills. Um, it is... In my opinion, I'm not going to stop using Google. Um, I don't think any, I think we're all kind of wedded to Google at this point. Um, Bing basically tries to emulate Google to catch up. So I do think that we are beholden to Google and that's why SEO is so important because you need to measure and iterate on what the algorithm is thinking about your website. And it can be huge if you drop out of the first position for a very important keyword, you could see a loss of traffic by 75% based on that keyword, even if you just move down one position. Um, so things are going to change. Things are always changing with Google search results and how it delivers them. And you really just have to keep, um, you just have to be aware of what's going on. Mary, as someone personally who's not been the biggest fan of SEO over the past few years. You've done a fantastic job of educating me and, and persuading me that maybe I should pay it a lot more attention than I have done in the past. Mary Smucker Priest, uh, CEO and founder of Simple Search Marketing, thank you so much for joining us in the pod today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This has been Dave Jones in the pod. Until next time, we'll see you very soon. Thank you.